kind of shifting gears a little bit. Um, and we talk a lot about planning as you do to your audience and some of the fundamentals to good planning. One of those I think that was probably reinforced more than ever uh, that I can recall was the importance of emergency reserves and having access to liquidity. Yes. So given that concept, and I, and I think for most people that you and I work with, we, we stress that and emphasize and we have a similar philosophy on that. But I know that still today there's people that regardless if it was a COVID or just an economic downturn, we'll call it, weren't ready. They weren't in a place. So talk to me a little bit about the importance of emergency reserves in your mind and some of the things you talk to your audience about. Yeah. So, you know, I personally like to have emergency reserves. I probably am a little more conservative than a lot of people uh, personally. And so when I'm working with advisors and their clients and trying to come up with what is the appropriate amount of emergency reserves to have on hand, you know, there is some pushback from both clients and advisors about, you know, I really, the market's going up right now. Why would I set aside that much cash in the savings account that's barely earning, you know, maybe 1%. Um, but what I like to emphasize is that money isn't meant for growth. That money is sort of a diversification so that if the market does go down, you have a place to go that's safe, um, that you don't have to sell in the downturn market. That's the worst time to sell, as we all know. Um, and so, so just making sure you have something. It, it doesn't actually have to be sitting in cash in the savings account, although I think there should be a certain amount that should be there. Um, you know, you could use debt uh, as another option. Some people say, oh, I have a credit card. You know, I keep around. I, I, I don't use it, but I could. And I think, well, you know, you might want to check that interest rate because right now they're running about 14%. <laughs> um, right. And do you really want to pay 14% where you could have just had, you know, some money in the savings account? And never mind the peace of mind that comes along, uh, along with that. And two, you know, and it depends on, on the clientele you're working with. Um, I think a lot of younger clients, you know, they think, okay, well, if my income's down, I'll just, I'll get a side gig. I'll, I'll go out and I can drive for Uber if I have to, uh, it, it, or if I get furloughed or I can go work in a restaurant or things like that. Well, none of those options are available right now with, with the pandemic, everything shut down. And, and then what can you do? So if you, if you truly cannot earn an income, you cannot figure a way to get income, what are you going to do? And, um, and again, dipping into your investments is, is not, optimal, uh, you know, it, it's available, but it's not optimal. And I, and I think you and I talked previously, you know, a lot of folks are like, okay, well, we've got, we've got a good amount of bonds in our portfolio. So that's where we would go if we had to. And I, I think you said uh, uh, that day you were on the, the exchange, bonds went down just as much as the stocks that day. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, no, the, the, the reserves um, is a good point. And that day, back in March, um, on the New York Stock Exchange, there was such a run on liquidity mm -hmm. that you saw not just corporate bonds falling, which even if that had good investment ratings, but you saw some treasuries and inflation protection because there was just a run on liquidity because everyone was trying to raise capital because the unknown, the uncertainty. When it's uncertainty is highest, that's a very common thing to see. It just happened to be very really extreme that day. And you're right, having that emergency reserves. Um, is really important. And I think the, the interest rate comment you made is, is important too. We've heard that where some say, you know what, Mark, you know, I think having a couple of years of cash, maybe you know, we can have only one year and, and invest the rest because, you know, we want to get a little more yield on our, on our uh, investment, our, our, our savings, and, and a year should be sufficient, right? And I think that's, and most people would feel good about that. Mm -hmm. But the argument, I think it was just a good lesson, right? Because the unknown about how long they may need to tap reserves. We may find out that some areas or some sectors and industries aren't going to return back to normal inside of 12 months. Right. Or, you know, it's going to be longer than that. So having the two years and then beyond that, having other layers of defense, I think on the reserves is like, you know, it's debt or other investments. Maybe then it makes sense, but you're right. I think that's an important thing that if we learn one important fundamental or got reminded is that having good reserves is super important. Right. Um, so, so good perspective there.